Okay, I'd like to call the meeting to order. Welcome everybody. Let's start out with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to, to the flag, flag of the United States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, next, we'll do introductions. Um, I'm Mike Vandersteen, Mayor of Sheboygan, and uh, the, the chair of the committee. Turn it over to Dean. Uh, I'm Dean Decker, uh, president of the Indiana Corridor Neighborhood Association, and also all the person for the 6th District. Abby Black, I'm the grant coordinator for the city of Sheboygan, and I'm also on the board of Kinney Park. I'm Betty Ackley. I'm an older person for District 4, and I'm also president of Maple Heights Neighborhood Association. I'm Jody Craver. I'm Mayor, if there's other people in the room, we can't hear them unless they go to a podium. We're working on that right now, Chad. Uh, Mike, one. Uh, Got it. Oh, Would those online please introduce themselves? Chad Pelashek with City Development. Janet Dolman with City Development. Krista Magalski, please. Elise Rose with City Development. Officer Deutsch, the South Side Beat Officer. Officer Post, the North Side Beat Officer. Well, welcome everybody. Um, the people in the, the room here, you're going to have to go to the podium to speak as we go on with the meeting. Sorry about that. The microphones don't seem to be working. Uh, next item on the agenda is to approve the minutes from our October 20th meeting. I believe those were emailed out to everyone. Is there any uh, changes needed in the minutes? If not, I'd entertain a motion to approve as presented. Motion to approve as presented. Is there a second? Second. Thank you for second that motion and support. One last call for any discussion on those minutes. Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify uh, to approve the minutes. Say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Aye. Same sign. Minutes pass. Next is items for discussion. Uh, we have a feature presentation on our pet friendly task group. Uh, Betty Ackley is serving as the chair of that group and uh, Abby Black is serving as our secretary and they're gonna team up on this presentation. So with that, I'll turn it over to them to get started. Mike's Sorry. Okay. So I wanted to say thank you for your time tonight. And first of all, we'd like to take a look at why pets improve our lives and how they can affect our physical health as well as our psychological well-being. Pet owners report more exercising and less depression than non-pet owners. Dog owners are five times more likely to know their neighbors. People who share their homes with pets are better able to deal with stress. Kids with pets tend to have greater self-esteem, less loneliness, and enhanced social skills. Pets reduce loneliness, depression, and anxiety, especially in older adults. Older dog owners engage in more walking and physical activity than non-owners. Pets at work are credited with improving morale and increasing work-life balances. 
So how did we get here and what are we doing? In March of 2020, Mayor Vandersteen, through the mayor's blog on the city website, invited residents of the city to participate in a subcommittee dedicated to improving pet friendliness in the city. Mayor Vandersteen had recently gone to a mayor's conference and learned of this excellent program sponsored by the Mars Corporation. Mars Corporation offers a certification program for cities to be designated as pet-friendly cities through their Better City for Pets program. For a bit more about the program, I'd like to turn this over to Abby. Hi. So uh, Mars Corporation and certifying a city as a Better City for Pets or a pet-friendly city uh, looks at First of all, two fundamental um, pieces, which are that pets and people are healthy, and then responsible pet ownership. So uh, it's both of those things need to be in place for it to be um, considered a pet-friendly community. And um, from there, it, it looks at four aspects of our community life, um, shelters, our homes and housing, uh, our parks and uh, public spaces, and then businesses. Um, so for a little bit... We did an assessment uh, as a subcommittee looking at where we currently stand in relation to these four areas um, and answered pretty many questions about different aspects uh, of this. And currently, we scored pretty highly on the shelters uh, aspect of that, looking at uh, how well we collaborate as a city and uh, private uh, organizations to fend off homelessness for animals, uh, how welcoming our shelters are, if we have any spay and neuter, trap and release programs, things like that for shelters. Uh, we didn't do quite so well in homes, parks, or businesses, uh, so we have a ways to go in terms of making sure there's affordable housing options for people with pets, uh, that there's support available if they need it, um, that our parks uh, are respectful and responsible uh, to responsible pet owners and to all uh, who live here, and then that businesses are better able to welcome people with pets. Okay, and so some of the things that the subcommittee is doing, we meet monthly, and our subcommittee consists of city staff members, city residents, and volunteers and staff members of the Humane Society of Sheboygan County. So far, we've reviewed the city's pet-friendly spaces, We've also looked into pet ordinances to see if any changes may be something we would want to discuss and ask the city council to consider. We have developed a community survey to understand better how the residents feel about pet friendliness in our city. The survey will be released soon. On the survey, we are asking residents targeted questions about their pet ownership experiences, their perceptions about pet friendliness in the city, and we are asking for suggestions from residents about what they feel would improve our city in regards to the goals of, that are set by the certification program. We hope that when this survey is released, you would please tell your neighborhood association members about the survey and ask them to please participate. As we move towards certification, we are hopeful that Sheboygan will be the first city in the state of Wisconsin to receive this designation. Thank you. All set. Mm -hmm. Well, that was a great presentation. We really appreciate the work that you're doing on the committee to uh, see Shaboy and become a more pet-friendly community. Are there any questions from anybody of our speakers? Anybody online? Do you know when the survey is being released? Uh, so the survey is pretty much complete right now. We're looking at what the time frame is. Obviously, we want to be uh, respectful of any other surveys, like the community survey that's coming out, I believe, in February, um, and looking at how we best get that out to the people who would share their opinions. So in spring, we're just not exactly sure uh, the timeline on that. Okay. Thanks for that question. Are there any others? Well, if anybody here would uh, like to get involved, let Abby and, uh, and Betty know, and, uh, and we'll get you on the committee. It looks like it's going to be a great project. Okay, next we'll go on to uh, the results of the Neighborhood Association Survey. Chad, who has uh, that program? Okay, Abby, go ahead. I, I do. Abby's going to put a PowerPoint up. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> yeah.
is a, I don't know, I can't see the PowerPoint. So is it up? Oh, there we go. So what we wanted to do tonight was share with you, with the neighborhoods, the results of the uh, neighborhood survey. So back when we did the, um, the neighborhood virtual neighborhood event in October, the last time the MNLC met, um, shortly thereafter, Nancy and Janet from City Development released a survey. Um, a number of neighborhood associations took that survey to try to give us some direction as to where we're going. So you can go to the next slide, Abby. So uh, based on the uh, gatherings of that survey, 80% of the survey ta takers were interested in, in other casual meetings. So one of, the, one of the questions on the survey was, um, how do you, how, what did you think of the virtual event and what do you think of the MNLC, the Mayor's Neighborhood Leadership Cabinet, and is there something that could be uh, done differently? And, and, and a lot of the, uh, there was 19 people that took the survey, 80% uh, of those 19 felt that they would like some kind of more casual meeting, so I'm not quite sure. We'll be looking for more information as we move forward on what uh, casual meetings mean. Um, I think we're going to get into open meeting laws with some of that, but we'll talk more about that as we move forward. 60% of the responses thought the city was providing excellent to good support to neighborhood associations. And then there was a question about ways that the planning and development staff could better support neighborhood associations. Um, and a number of uh, different examples came up. Uh, including the uh, continue to build on, um, continue to provide printing and design services. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to pull up mine so I can read the whole slide. Uh, continue to provide, build on the printing and design services, more opportunities for funding of projects, assist the associations with engaging um, with neighbors to get them to participate. Uh, and then create learning events for association board members to gain more skills. So if you can go to the next slide. So there was also a question about what are neighborhood associations proud of? Um, one response was removal of an old gas station and illegal car repair shop. A lot of responses about becoming an association. So that's a huge milestone in uh, people's success, uh, cleaning up parks and adding new lights, making the grade clothing drive, the annual dumpster event, and then historical historical walks within uh, with partnership to the Sheboygan Historical Museum. So if you go to the next slide, then the, con the confidence in neighborhood associations will continue in the future. So there was a question on what do you think the likelihood of your neighborhood association continuing in the future? And all 19 survey takers responded yes. So we were happy to hear that, um, that there's the 12 or 13 associations that we currently have in place are, um, are feel they're strong and can move forward. Can you go to the next slide? So on the thoughts of reorganizing the MNLC, so the, the, there's been some discussion had it happening about, um, you know, what should the MNLC continue to meet every other month? Um, should it have some, you know, casual meetings in there? Should there be, you know, continued? We in the past had done some tours of city county facilities uh, prior to COVID. So. What we're looking for is, is some feedback from the neighborhood associations on do committee members favor continuing every other month or would you prefer quarterly or semi-annual meetings of this group or have MNLC meetings four times a year or some schedule that's agreed upon. And then, as I said, take these back out into city, county facilities and departments and give the board members an opportunity to kind of see, see the behind the scenes tour of facilities within the city to get a better understanding of how the city works. And then, you know, schedule maybe a more casual meeting of the MNLC in a park twice a year where maybe in one in the spring and one in the fall where it's not so formalized um, and it has the opportunity for members, uh, neighborhood association members to co-mingle. So I guess I'm, you know, looking for once I'm finished, if there's any thoughts on what the people that are on the MNLC uh, feel and then 
we will take this back and have an internal discussion as it relates to that. If you can go to the next slide. Um, so we had talked about the survey uh, results. One of the answers was they liked learning events. So, um, you know, I know the mayor struggles with um, what should be on the agenda and, and how do we engage uh, people and, and give people more an understanding. So I think going back to, and I would look for some comments from, you know, Dean's in the room, um, not to put you on the spot, Dean, but you and I had a brief conversation after the council meeting yesterday about this. And, um, you know, I think it's, there's some opportunity once COVID ends to go back out and visit the wastewater tree plant treatment plan, visit the police department, go to fire stations, and just get an understanding of how operations work. Um, yes, we have been to a lot of these facilities in the past, but we also have a lot of new members that are on board that um, might have an interest in learning uh, more about that. So if you can go to the next slide. So we, most of you know that Nancy Maring has resigned from the city um, as of mid-December. In uh, late last year, I sent an email out to every neighborhood with new neighborhood assignments from the planning and development side of things. So um, we have kind of expanded out who is going to be assigned from our uh, department to the neighborhoods. And uh, Abby Block is, is in the council chambers. Elise Rose is on uh, remote with us. She is a permit clerk at the thing inspection department, lives on the south side of Sheboygan and has an interest in being involved. So she's been assigned to a number of neighborhood associations. And then Janet uh, Duelman is taking the role of Nancy Faring. So any neighborhood related questions should go be funneled through uh, Janet and she will be um, helping Abby and Elise uh, with a few introduction meetings of the neighborhood associations. And then she's got a few uh, neighborhoods of her own. So that's kind of where we're at. We'll be looking deeply for our partners at the Sheboygan Police Department, especially the feed officers to help us uh, with this, given that we have limited staff in the planning and development department. Next slide. So under the next steps, um, we're planning, there's a meeting scheduled tomorrow for the police department, the mayor's office, and the planning and development staff to meet and talk about um, developing a plan on how we uh, modify the mayor's labor neighborhood leadership cabinet or keep it the way it is or do nothing, I guess. We're just looking for input from the group as to um, what every, and I understand not everybody's here today, um, but we're, we need to kind of make a decision how we move forward with this uh, to make it the most uh, advantageous to each of the organizations and what they want to see out of it. So I would look for any comments on these slides from the guests in the council chambers or those online um, as, as a respective neighborhood association as part of the mayor's neighborhood leadership cabinet. So that's it. Well, thank you very much for that report, Chad. Dean, he kind of left the door open for you to make some comments. Did you want to go ahead? Well, I, I would agree with Chad about the, um, the, the 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 tours and things like that. I think that's that's a valuable tool for you know for us as a, as a uh, as the council or leadership council. Um, I think that's that's also a, a real positive. Uh, I would like us to at least stay either either at a quarterly or but uh, bi-monthly basis. Um, I, I think going to like you know just just like two meetings a year I don't think would be enough. I think we, we should at least stay with a four meeting uh, per year, um, or stay with the with every other month um, because I think we just need to keep in contact and keep keep things um, up to up to speed with everything that's going on. Um, other than that, uh, I guess that's. But I, but I do say that the. The tours are always are always a nice. It gets people to know what's going on in their city. It um, gets to see, to see all the different things, and it gives you ideas for your groups. I mean, that's one of the things that we you know we we did some of the tours. I know when Pete and I came through, and we were like, "Hey, this." I think everybody else in our group would really like to do this, and then we would do some of what we did a police department tour with our Indiana corridor group. We did one of City Hall here. Um, we're hoping you know when when this COVID thing gets calmed down. We'll be able to do some more in the future with our groups uh, themselves also. So that gives you, as a leader of your group, to be able to 
what's what what ideas and what things you know your 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 uh, neighborhood would be interested in. Thank you, Dean. You know, Dean, I think that uh, you and I are here from the beginning, yeah. and and Chad, and, and we feel kind of like, well, we did that. We don't have to go back and repeat it, but some of those good tours and other yep. things that we did in the past should be repeated because not everybody here in the room has been here from the beginning, and so they need a chance to experience those things as well. I would concur. I think it's, you know, it, it doesn't hurt for me to go see, you know, to, to walk through the sewage treatment plant for a second time. Um, it, I don't think it hurt, you know, the, it keeps us, it, it, there's always changes with some of these things and things like that. And I think we have, a, we have some great opportunities. We have a new senior center coming that we'll be, you know, we'll be able to show people. Uh, I think that things like that um, will be uh, valuable for our, our neighborhoods. Any other input? Questions? Not here in the room. Anybody online? Yeah, this is uh, Keith Jacks from Gateway. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Go okay, ahead. Great. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, uh, I like the meetings. A lot of us are new and we're just growing, at least in Gateway. So a number of us uh, don't know everybody. The apartments and uh, all of those would be useful to us. Um, and for, for me, our, our little group, one of the things we are looking for is uh, best practices from other neighborhoods, whether in our city or other cities. We, we're just, we want to organize and, and, uh, and do something good in our little, little tiny community in our neighborhood. And we, you know, so we want to help. And there's a number of us, but uh, we're, we're small. Our group, uh, we're small, but we're growing. And uh, just looking for that kind of help. It's, it's real helpful. I know you've had the tours and all that, uh, but somehow for us to get to know uh, all the departments and our, and other uh, associations, it's real helpful to get information from other people. Thanks for those comments, Keith. Anyone else? Go ahead. Um, can I just ask, so is there a way to maybe meld the two where it's, uh, meeting quarterly or bi-monthly, but then there's also a maybe less formal option of whatever neighborhoods want to get together, whether that's one side of town um, or neighboring organizations or whatever that looks like, um, where it's not, there's not a necessarily an agenda other than just to talk through what's working and not working and what you've tried and are hoping to try. Thank you for that I suggestion. Think, Abby, to that question, I think there is an opportunity to do that. I think that's kind of where the survey results showed that more casual, not so formal meetings. So I think the, the plan or the goal would be to try to do, um, you know, do maybe a north side and a south side one in spring and fall that's not posted as an official meeting. And maybe, I don't know, we're going to have to talk. It gets into some open meeting laws because we're all – uh, all the neighborhoods are actually um, members of the uh, of this committee, so I'm gonna we're gonna have to have some discussions with the attorney's office and see how that can be functionally done or not done. But it, we don't want to violate any kind of open meeting laws. <clears throat> but that's not to say that we couldn't make it a meeting of the ma mayor's neighborhood leadership cabinet uh, and post you know post an agenda and just have one item and still talk about stuff in an open discussion. So I think the goal I, uh, from our side would be to take it to a neighborhood park um, in the spring and in the, in the fall uh, and just make it not so formalized as the council chambers and have maybe just one idea, one agenda item to share information or something. All right. Any other comments? Go ahead, Dean. Um, I also would encourage like um, other neighborhoods to visit other neighborhood committees. Um, that's one of the, uh, King Park came to uh, one of the Indiana Corridor's <laughs> neighborhood committees because they were curious as to how our group worked and how we got the turnout that we were getting out. Um, I hope we continue to get that turnout after COVID. We, we really haven't had much in meetings, um, but that's one of the things I would also encourage people to do, say reach out to a neighbor, a neighborhood in your area that maybe isn't part of yours and kind of see how they run their operation and maybe go to one of their meetings or, you know, and vice versa. Have, you know, between us all, 
I think you can uh, you can learn a lot from the other 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 groups. Thank you. Well, with that, then let's move on to the neighborhood uh, roundtable discussion. And I invite Keith Jacks to open it up with a little bit of uh, the Gateway Christmas uh, decoration project. Keith? Oh, thanks. We had a blast with this. Uh, it was very simple. We just uh, decided we would uh, have six uh, categories. And we gave the judges uh, uh, the leeway that if, if if we didn't have Christmas trees, for example, and one of our, our uh, uh, categories was best Christmas tree, well, then they could change the name of it and have another. We just wanted six categories. We wanted to give away uh, some prizes. And uh, we didn't have a lot of people, just over a dozen uh, that participated. Um, but some of them were really excited about it. And it was fun for us. It uh, created a little bit of excitement in the neighborhood. But we just made it real simple had a flyer, let people know what to, uh, to do. They just gave us uh, their information. Uh, we just needed a, a phone number, email, so we could contact them and obviously their, their address uh, if they were one of the winners. And then we, the judges went around uh, um, on a Sunday and, uh, and looked at them and came up with six winners and we announced it. And it was, I thought it was a success. We had fun. Good. Thanks very much for that report. Any questions to Keith? Who'd like to go next? What's been going on in your neighborhood association? Mayor, it's uh, Israel, but a uh, reminder for some of these neighborhood associations trying to come up with some ideas, you know, to attract people. But during this slow time, winter time, I know a lot of people kind of cancel their meetings because of COVID or the holidays. But now is a good time to recharge and think of some good ideas. Last year, Indiana Corridor did an actual neighborhood meeting at the corner of uh, 22nd Street and Indiana Avenue. And I thought that was extremely successful. A lot of people pulled over, took photographs, like, what's going on? Uh, and a lot of neighbors came out of their house we haven't seen before. So instead of hiding, you know, this summer in some park shelters or churches actually get out and have your meeting actually in a neighborhood like on a street corner or something like that um it's certain to attract a lot of neighbors and wonder what's going on so just a small tidbit of a you know an idea but again the winter time really good time uh for everybody to kind of think about some out of the box thinking ideas to attract some other people those those meetings that you have thank you israel any other best practices or things anybody would like to share I just go, um, the uh, biggest challenge that we have right now is having a space large enough to be able to, I mean, like we, our, our favorite place to, to meet is at Frankie's Bar, which was, you know, but it's, it's so small. And with the age of a lot of the, of our, of our um, members, um, it's difficult to, to uh, expect them to all go into this tiny space. And the thing is, is in the past, when we would know we would have a larger meeting, we would use like one of, the, we would use Madison School, but the school district doesn't want anyone in, in the schools right now. So there, that is the biggest challenge, I guess, right now is to have a large space area. I know we can come down here to, and use the council chambers, but um, I think uh, it's still still a little bit difficult to get people to, to come out for something like that. And that's 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 the issue right now. So hopefully uh, when COVID gets, we, we can get moving forward in the next couple of months. Thank you. Anyone else online? Mayor, I, I would just add, this is Keith Jackson Gateway again. I would just add, we're still meeting monthly via Zoom. We, for all the reasons we just talked about, we've moved out of uh, uh, the various places we were trying and, and it, we were meeting outside it's too cold so we we're going with zoom but we get very few people on that uh, i like the idea of the street corner but uh, it's a little chilly for some of us <laughs> thank you keith yeah and the city does offer um this is janet by the way um the city does have uh, our department does have a zoom account and we will set up a meeting for any neighborhoods who do not have zoom accounts and we will be there to start the meeting for you and to participate in your meeting if need be. Um, so 
I know some neighborhoods have gone to that and it turned out absolutely wonderful for them. They've actually had more people attending their meetings because they can do it from their home. Um, you know, if they're putting kids to bed or whatever, at least that way they can participate, but not actually leave their home while their kids are going to bed or falling asleep. So um, it has been a great thing for some of those neighborhoods. So if you're not doing that, it might be something you want to consider. And if you need me to set up a meeting, just give Abby, Elise, or myself a call, and we can do that, or email us, and we'll help you do that. Thanks for that suggestion, Janet. Appreciate it. Uh, Mr. Chief, I would just add, too, if somebody's really just looking for a space, the municipal court could be used, too. Um, it's big enough if, if there's 10 or 15 people you could spread out, um, and I'm sure um, either of the beat officers would be be more than willing to help arrange that and um, set up the room and clean up after and things so that the judge is happy. Thanks for that suggestion, Chief. Okay, with that, then we'll move on to uh, the Sheboygan Neighborhood Pride update. Penny, are you there? I am. I've had technical difficulties. Can everybody hear me? You're coming through fine. Thank you. Wonderful. All right. Well, Sheboygan Neighborhood Bride has been rather quiet. Uh, there is just one neighborhood that is just beginning to organize. It is Business Drive North, and that was put together by Officer Hayes. Um, they had a meeting in December, it was the very first, and they had a great turnout. He said he thought they had about 32 people there. There was a great deal of interest in going forward and forming a group, and uh, he had planned to do another meeting in January, which is this month or next month. I've been helping him via email, and he said he's going to try to set up a Zoom meeting for the February one. And of course, um, if it's Zoom, I'll be there. But that's about it for Sheboygan Neighborhood Pride. Well, thanks for continuing to, to work on those new neighborhoods. We appreciate it. And uh, they, we want to say thank you for the great work you did in 2020 to get us up to 12 neighborhoods now. That's amazing. Thank you. You're welcome. Any last comments for good of the order before we adjourn? Well, thank you to everybody for, uh, yes, go ahead. One second. Uh, I just wanted, uh, with uh, S&P, uh, they're down to two board members. So if anyone has any ideas of people that would be interested in running for that, uh, I know that Penny, you know, has shouldered a lot of it, but they're, they're looking for two members as well. So if anyone has any ideas or uh if they themselves wanted to, I'm sure that Penny would be uh, more than willing to, uh, to talk with them and, and figure things out like that. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Okay, then I'll just remind you that right now we're uh, planning a, a next meeting on March 2nd. Uh, we'll see how things go with the discussions tomorrow and let you know what uh, came out of those discussions. But at this time, I'm entertaining a motion for adjournment. Motion to adjourn. This is Chad. I'll, I'll second. Thank you for that motion and support. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? We stand adjourned. Thank you very much for your time tonight. Appreciate you being here. Aye.